Hello and welcome to the parent text information section of the FAFSA application for the 2021-2022 academic year. We will be going line by line on how to fill out the parent portion, um, specifically the, the text demographic of the parent, which we know that the student and parent get stuck on. Um, so we will be going through line by line and we're going to jump right in. So the first section of the parent financials is asking, have you completed 2019 taxes or other tax returns? If you have already completed your taxes for the 2019 year, you will stay already completed. If you have not completed the, your taxes, but will um, in the future, we understand that life happens and we put aside a lot of things. Um, you could state will file and then come back later on and change it to already filed when you have those tax forms. The third one is if you did not work at all um, and you, or you didn't file at all, um, you're going to state will not file. The second question of the section is what type of income tax return did your parents file for the 2019 year? So we may have questions of how do I know what type of form they filed? Um, where can I find that information? So we are asking for parents and students to have 2019 taxes in front of you um, to complete this portion because you are going to be asked go, to go into the taxes and look line by line. So if you're questioning what type of income tax return my parent completed, you can always look at your tax form. This is the page that you will want to look at. So on the left-hand side corner, it says form 1040. So this is how you know what type of tax form you filed. There are various different forms such as um, foreign taxes and Puerto Rican foreign, Puerto Rican taxes as well. So depending on the tax form that you have completed, um, our example student, their parent, parents filed a 1040. So we will be going back and forth with a 1040 um, tax return. So keep that in mind. Um, the following question is, for 2019, what is your parents tax filing status according to their tax return? This is another thing that you need to look at the taxes for in order to answer this question. So there's five different ways um, parents, parents or an individual can file. So single, married filing jointly, um, married filing separately, head of household and qualifying widower. So depending on what is checked off, you wanna make sure to select that answer. So for this question, what is your parents' tax filing status according to their tax return? You have the, the selection of single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of household and widower. So depending on what your tax estate, you are going to select what applies to you. Our example is um, they filed married filing jointly, so they are going to select that. For those who are like, I don't want to do it manually, I want to go directly to the IRS website and link everything electronically, meaning that you, you're, you're going into the IRS website and you're electronically transferring everything from your taxes onto the FAFSA application. You can go ahead and click link to the IRS and it will pop up this parent eligible for IRS DRT. Um, known as the IRS data retrieval tool. Um, you can click on link to IRS and have that option of electronically linking everything that's on your taxes onto the FAFSA. You wanna make sure when you are on the IRS site that everything that is on there matches your taxes, um, meaning your name, your last name, if you have two last names on your taxes, you wanna make sure to include that second last name on the IRS data retrieval tool. You wanna to make sure that you're typing in your home address the same way that it is on the taxes. 
Um, if it's off, it will not link your taxes. It's very particular about how individuals input their information. So you wanna make sure if your address is all capitalized, if it has a street, avenue, um, boulevard, you wanna make sure to include that. If um, you live in an apartment number and you have an apartment number on your taxes, um, you will want to make sure to include that as well. If the state, uh, if the city or um, town that you live in is capitalized, you want to make sure that is capitalized. So you want to make sure it, you're you're copying it the same way that your taxes have that information. Um, like I stated, it is kind of particular, and if it's off, it will not link. Um, other reasons on why it will not link is uh, identity theft. If your parents have gone through identity theft, it will not link. If you have switched addresses, um, that will also prevent it to link due to not having an updated um, mailing address in the IRS system. Um, and then the third one, simply because either you your parents owe to the IRS um, and have not paid that balance, it will not link as well. And then the fourth option, it just won't link. Um, some, Sometimes there are issues of linking um, and we do not know the, the, the reasons why. So I gave you the, the common three um, issues that, that we, we, we come across on why parents cannot link. So you wanna make sure that everything, when you are in the IRS website, everything is correct and it looks the same as on your parents' taxes. The, fi the following section is um, the question of adjusted gross. So what was your parents' adjusted gross income in for 2019? This amount is found on IRS form 1040 line AB. So you're probably wondering, okay, where do I find this information on their taxes? So we, we have an example of the taxes, they are blank. Um, we don't want to share personal information out there. So you will want to make sure to look at your tax, your parents' tax form, and you see how there's numbers on each side. So they were asking for line 8B. So we count down from 1 to 8. As you see, there's 8A, and then there's 8B. So that's the second one. You want to input the information that's in 8B. So I'm going to stay here for a couple of seconds so you could locate that 8B number and so you could put it in the FAFSA application. Okay, so for our example, he, they put 28,000 that they made of adjusted gross income. So whatever amount is on that line 8B, you want to input it there. The following section is how much did your parent one earn from working? So wages, salaries, tips in 2019. And this can be found on either their W-2s or um, your, your, your parents taxes. So there's two ways to locate this. Usually when there's two parents in the household, you will want to check the W-2s um, because on the tax forms, it will combine the whole income from both parents. So you wanna make sure that you have your parents' 2019 W-2s also in hand. They may be in that packet, that tax packet that you have right in front of you. So please locate those and we will move on to the next slide to tell you how you're going to answer this question. So on the FAFSA, it states you will look at the portions of the IRS form 1040, line one, schedule one, lines three and six. You're going to add them. And box 14, code A of the IRS schedule K-1 form 1065. Some of you may not have a Schedule 1 or a Schedule K-1, and that's okay. You're only going to look at the 1040 Line 1 or your W-2s, either or, to get this response. And you're probably wondering where on the W-2s you find 
the wages, salaries, tips, et cetera, in 2019. So here is an example of a 2018 W-2. It will be under box one where it states wages, tips, and other compensations, okay? If you're like, you know what? I don't wanna do the W-2 route. I wanna stick to the tax portion. Okay, so you will, if you have a 1040, it will be under line one, okay? If you have a schedule one, you are going to want to add it line three and six. So whatever's in box three and six, you're going to add, add it to one. So one plus three plus six, and you're going to put the total amount if you have a, the 1040 and a schedule one. If you have a K, schedule K1, you're gonna also include line 14 onto there and you want to make sure to see who made the income because sometimes we have a parent that owns a business and a parent that that works um, and they get a w-2 so you want to double check what parent made what and you could always look at who's who's whose taxes um who's either who's showing up whose name's on here. So if it's only one parent, you know that that parent got income from a business or a farm or from a partnership. So you wanna double check who's, who earned that income. And then with the W-2, the same thing, because as a reminder, parent one and parent two, remember in the beginning of this section, you put parent one's information and parent two. So you wanna make sure that you put parent one's correct in wages and also parents two, okay? So for our example, they added everything and they got 16,000 for parent one and then 12,000 for parent two. And that was due to looking at 1040 line one Schedule one, lines three and six, and box 14. As a reminder, if you do not have a schedule one or a schedule K1, it is okay. You are only going to be looking at the 1040 line one or your W-2s. Okay. And I'm going to stay here for a couple minutes. So you could locate line one, three, and six. And then schedule K1, we're looking at line 14. Okay, following section of the FAFSA is you indicated that your parent filed an IRS 1040. Did they file a schedule one? Select no if your parents did not file a schedule one or only filed a Schedule one to report unemployment compensation, education, educator expenses, IRA deduction, students, student loan interest deductions, Alaska permanent fund dividend, or virtual currency. Click here for more information. You could always click here. It'll give you a little snippet of what they mean by um, virtual currency and Alaska permanent fund dividend. You're probably wondering, how do I know if they filed the schedule one? We're looking at the left-hand side corner and it's highlighted schedules one. So that's how we know if your parent filed the schedule one. They will usually have a 1040 and also a 10 uh, schedule one also. So keep that in mind or a variety of schedules. So you wanna make sure to double check everything that's on your parents tax tax package because you 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 want to double check to see if they do have this. So our example said yes, they did file a schedule 1. 
and therefore they're going to answer a yes. Um, answer yes. If your parent did not file a Schedule One, you're going to say no. If you're like, I can't, I don't even know. Um, I'm just going to put don't know. That is okay as well. Um, as of today, is either of your parent a dislocated worker, meaning that they are laid off? Um, they um, they do they could not come back to work due to being laid off. If you answer no, that's fine. If you answer yes, then you, if that applies to you, you're answering yes. Um, if you don't know, make sure to answer your, ask your parents because um, at, during this current climate, they may be laid off um, and waiting for a call back from their job. So you wanna make sure to answer this question correctly. Some of you may get this box um, that's asking for um, if, if your household received any be benefits um, that are listed. So meaning, did your family get Medicare, SSSI, meaning supplemental security income, um, supplemental nutrition assistant program, also known as the link card, free or reduced lunch from school, temporary assistant, um, for needy families, which is cash along with the link card, um, special supplemental nutrition program for women and children known as WIC. So if your um, parent has a newborn child, they may have received WIC or they are currently receiving WIC. Um, and if it, none of these apply to you, you could always check none of the above. So please ask your parents if you know that they, they are receiving some type of, type of supplemental um, assistance, you wanna make sure to answer it correctly. And they are only asking if you received it in 2019 or 2020. So you wanna uh, make sure to ask them about it if they received it within the 2019 or 2020 year. This is our schedule one. Okay, the following section is our parent information, which is enter the amount of your parents' income tax for 2019. This is the total amount of IRS form 1040 line 14 minus schedule two line two. So we are looking at two different forms, which is our 1040, which is our main um, sheet. And we're looking at line 14, and then we're looking at schedule two. So as a reminder, you may have a schedule two or you may not. If you do not have a schedule two, that's okay. You're only looking at line 14 of your taxes. If you do have a Schedule 2, you want to make sure to follow the instructions on subtracting line 14 from Schedule 2. And you're probably like, where do I locate that? So we're going to go right ahead. So your 1040 will look like the one on the left-hand side, which is line 14, which we have boxed out. And you're going to subtract that from line 2, Schedule 2. Okay. And that is if you have a Schedule 2. If you do not have a Schedule 2, you're only looking at line 14 on your taxes. Okay? So 14 minus 2. For our exam, I'm going to stay here for a while for you to locate it. And we're going to go back to our example. So our example located the, the lines of the IRS form and they subtracted 14 minus schedule to line two and they got $2,000, okay? So as a reminder, you wanna make sure to look at the correct forms. If you don't have any schedules, you're only looking at your 1040. But if you do have schedules, please make sure to locate the correct line. Okay, 
We are coming down to the final section, um, and this is going to be a lot of back and forth, so please stay with me. Um, the first question is combat pay or special combat, meaning that they, um, if a family, if a parent or fam a family member um, received, that is a parent received combat pay. If you did receive combat pay, you want to make sure to include the whole year that they received combat pay. This is mostly for military families um, that receive combat pay, so keep that in mind. Um, students, college grant and scholarship aid reported to the IRS in your parents' income um, include, includes AmeriCorps benefits, awards, living allowances, and inherent accrual payments, as well as grants and scholarship portions of fellowships or assistantship. So if a parent had an assistantship or fellowship, they will include the amount that they received for the year 2019. Educational credit, which is an American Opportunity Tax Credit of Lifetime Learning Tax Credit from the IRS, we are going to go back to our tax forms, um, which is a 1040 Schedule 3. So if you have Schedule 3, you are going to look at Line 3, which looks like this. So we see Schedule 3 and Line 3, which is highlighted. So if you have this form and you have a portion or a number in here, you will want to include that number in this section where it says educational credits. If you have untaxed portions of IRA distribution or pensions from the IRS form 1040, we are going to be looking at 4A minus 4C plus, oh no, minus, minus 4B plus 4D, exclude rollover. So um, if you have this section, but it says rollover, do not include it. And you're probably wondering, okay, where do I locate? Um, if I have an IRA, IRA distribution and pension, we are looking at the main first form, um, which is under 4A plus 4B plus 4D. And so we are going to add that and then subtract it by 4C plus 4D. So we're going to, whatever's in 4B, we're going to subtract that by 4C plus 4D. So remember 4A plus 4B minus 4C plus 4D. And that's what you will input in that section right here. And untaxed portion of IRA distribution and pensions. The following question is the IRA deductions and payments to self-employment, SEP, simple, K-E-O-G-H, and other qualifying plans from the IRS form 1040, schedule one total, of line 15 plus 19. So remember, we're looking at schedule one. If this applies to you, we are going to add 15, line 15 plus 19. And we're going to include that in where it says IRA deduction and payments. Tax exempt inherent income, and this is from the IRS form 1040, line 2A. So it is where it says 2A tax exempt in the first box. That is where we're looking at. Okay. And that is the end of the tax portion. Um, the following, okay, the following um, section 
as if you are you have paid child support so you want to make sure to notate how much you made how much you you paid sorry how much you paid of child support in the year 2019 so if you had a monthly payment of $200, you're going to multiply that by 12 of child support. If it was higher your goal and you had a steady amount coming in, you're going to multiply that by 12. Earnings from, earnings from work under cooperative education program offered by a program. So if you um, were part of cooperative, cooperative education program and you have an amount of how much you made, you wanna put it here. In the second section, um, taxable earnings from need-based employment program, such as a federal work study and need-based employment portion. So if you, your parents were working um, under federal work study or a fellowship, um, fellowship and assistantships, and they, they were taxable earnings, you want to put the amount that they, they earned here. The following one is child support received. So if your parent received child support, they will want to identify how much they are, they received in 2019. And the second question is house, food, and other living allowances paid to members of the military or clergy. So, so if they were getting house food paid by, paid by the church or military, you want to put how much they were receiving for the whole year of 2019. The third question is in regards to payments to tax deferred pension and retirement savings plan um, paid directly or withheld from earnings, including but not limited to amounts reported on the W-2 form. So you will be looking directly at your W-2 form. Um, you're going to be looking on boxes 12A through 12D, codes D, E, F, G, H, and S um, should be included here. Do not include um, any amounts that were reported under code D, D. Do not include, you're only looking at D, E, F, G, H. And you're probably wondering where on my W-2 do I locate this? So this is our example, W-2. It will be under where it says 12A, 12B, 12C, and 12D, okay? And if you have multiples, you wanna make sure to add them up. Do not add or do not include codes DD on here. So keep that in mind. The following is veteran non-educational benefits, such as disability, death pension, or dependency and indemnity compensation known as DIC and or VA educational work study allowances. So you want to make sure to include the whole, the whole amount that you earned under veteran non-benefits, non-educational benefits. Here, um, other untaxed income not reported, such as workman's comp, disability benefits. So if you have received um, disability benefits or workman's comp, you want to make sure to include in the last section that were untaxed income. So we are going to our final section, and they will ask you this question. Do you want to skip questions about your parents' assets, meaning that you do not want to answer any questions about your checking, savings, um, investments, or business? Um, you could say yes, that you do want to skip, or no, you could answer. And then the first question is asking you how much how much do you have, your parents have in their savings and checking accounts, if that's including also cash, um, and how much do they have in those accounts? You want to make sure to, to remember as of today, um, how much do they have? The second question is, as of today, what is the net worth of your parents' investment, including real estate, not your parents' home? 
So if your parents own multiple properties, um, they will have to include that on the FAFSA. And keep that in mind. If you need assistance on how to um, allocate the amount of investment, it is how much you owe from your mortgage minus your how much your property is owned and you divide that by how many properties you have. You're not including the house that you live in. You're only including the additional properties here. Um, as of today, what is the net worth of your parents' current business and or investment farm? So if you have a farm or business with more than 100 employees, you want to make sure to state what is the net worth here. And that is all for this section. Um, please join us for the following section, which is the student tax filing um, section. Thank you.